All right, last episode, you saw me bash the firewall. It's not a permanent solution. We are going to have to notch that firewall. So I'm gonna, unfortunately, take the truck more apart. Yes and no. Uh, we're going to pull the firewall and then fix another Ford issue while we're at it because uh, we can't have that. Here we go. Don't harp on me for pulling apart an old Ford. It is a great engine. It's just not gonna make me happy. Not near as much as a Caterpillar. I don't want the engine to sit any lower, but we'll see where it is up against the cab. It's getting out of hand. Holy crap, this is actually gonna work. I'm gonna move the firewall back two inches. Who knows, maybe these swaps will be the next thing and I should patent this. All right, so even though you guys can see a little bit of a gap there, that's too tight because the engine's hitting the firewall. So in this episode, we're going to cut the firewall out. I'm gonna notch that back so we can move the engine back two, two and a half inches. So once that's notched, we can add our be quiet sound deadening to it, keep this cab nice and quiet. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's water coming in here. So we suspect a leaking windshield. So we're gonna get Froggy's Auto Glass, Adam, to pull the windshield. Uh, I'm not going to put it back in again right away. He's going to put the windshield back in the Silverado and then we'll get him back in once we have the new dash in there. With the dash out, it's really easy for us to kind of modify uh, the new dash to make it fit. So we'll pull this interior out, uh, pull the dash out. There we go. Just a couple things. I'm pretty aggressive with ripping this dash out and other parts that I know are no good to me. We're not using this wiring, we're not using this ductwork, we're not using this uh, dash. But get the quite a, more comments than I'd like into guilting me into saying I would have bought that or I would have done something with that and that's worth money. It really isn't. I can tell and look at that that the dash is cracked and 40, 30 years old and not really any good. And I don't have time to ship it, unfortunately. I'd love to help you guys out, but I've tried so many times and the deals always fall through. Give you, you know what, just a just hundred bucks to pay for shipping and cover my time. Yeah, yeah, no problem, gonna do it, gonna do it. Three, four emails back and forth. Oh, it turns out I don't really want it. Oh, it turns out, oh, I just sold what I had and I don't need it anymore. I can't, I can't do that, unfortunately. It takes away from my time to be able to work on projects. But if you head over to Toosley, They'll set you up with whatever parts you want. They've got a couple of these trucks in the yard. Our dashes are in much better shape than the heat soaked California, Texas, Arizona um, dashes. This dash isn't for sale. It's going in the garbage because it's cracked and broken. And uh, we're not going to use it anyway. We're going to put a nice 2010 interior in there. King Ranch might have to end up using some of this. But by the time we cut our little access into the firewall on that, it's not going to be a whole lot left. So um, thanks for commenting. Thanks for watching. But uh, we're not really into the reselling of parts or accepting the guilt of trying to make me think I ruined something. <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. Cat in the cab. Cat under the hood. 
All right, dash is out. I'm gonna pull the HVAC because I gotta do some welding there and then likely go with the newer style. I'm gonna drop the steering mount as the new dash here. Um, just gets bolted onto the side here. Uh, so make some new brackets to mount this because um, that's what holds the steering in place. So basically we're gonna start over. Um, I'm gonna pull the wheel well on the passenger side here so I can get at the HVAC and then yank that out. Here we go. Hmm. It's getting out of hand. Pretty out of hand. Okay, I'm really, I think I'm really gonna enjoy this. the carpet out and then uh, we'll pull this off it's all pretty dry and cracked so we'll replace that after we cut a giant hole in the firewall here we go so it looks like I goofed a little bit not a huge deal um, I don't think the windshield is leaking I think my leak was right there <laughs> evidence shows that um, water was coming in there somehow. So, unfortunately, I already ordered a windshield. So we will be putting a windshield in it. Not that it's a huge deal because I do have a stone chip. You see it? And technically, if it's in the driver's wiper, we're not allowed to have that, so. And we're employing Froggy's Autoglass. Great guy. So, he gets some business too. I jumped the gun on that one but uh, it'll make it easier for the dash install and stuff. It's, it'll be fine. Here we go. That looks good, but I've got quite a gap here. Forget about that lip, that, that side piece, yeah. like this piece. Where is that now? Pretty much flush, but there's still a gap here from the uh, eight miller, but a hand. Okay. We might have room for the Super Duty dash. Whoa, what was that? Oh. <laughs> well, that's the noise it makes when you short something out. I'm like, why is it flashing? <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. As, so, you know, no weeds, just, uh, just a lonely old F550 or 450 sitting in the. No mosquitoes at all. All right, let's see what we can do here. Uh, steering's already disconnected. I got one door off. That's nice. I could yank it out of here. You know, I'll probably just yank it out of the weeds here because the weeds are literally growing inside the truck. Oh, I think the one tire is seized. And then it's an. Uh... Yeah, I'll just yank it. Here we go. Well, I didn't quite make it before dark. My girls woke up, so I had to put them back to bed, but I got it. There she is. Two little bolts at the back here, way buried down in there. That kind of got me. I will put this in place, see, see how far this sits, and then we'll go from there. There we go. Okay, not gonna lie, that is a pretty good fit. I'll probably nip two inches off all the way along the edge and bring it in closer and then cut the firewall out of the F550 and weld most of that in behind here. Then I can bolt all of the HVAC stuff in behind there. This is the simplest of the wiring. Uh, I'd really like to incorporate the console somehow. I will have to take these off and bring them in. We'll f find a different way to mount it. Um, but it, everything is on this one bar here and two bolts back there. So. I can I can make a weld a little plate on there when the windshield's out to mount those two bolts there. Keep the rubber there. I'm gonna lift it up slightly, tilt it up slightly, 
a little bit more room for the legs and then uh holy crap this is actually gonna work um we will have to paint to get everything to match we'll try to match it to this color as best as possible and i think i might have to redo this piece and notch it out and fold it in because it just sticks out too wide so now that I know the dash fits, I can cut out the firewall, move the engine back a little bit, make sure I got enough room for the HVAC, and then move the dash in as close as possible. But this is a really big cab, so that, that shouldn't be a problem still climbing into that. Uh, put the tilt column in there, probably put the other steering wheel on, and uh, paint to match um, one of these colors. Anyway, it's pretty late. Um, so I'm gonna go to bed. This is a nice thing to wake up to in the morning, a really nice super duty dash in a a 350 with a caterpillar in the hood. So here we go. Yeah. Oh, come on, Rich. This thing's immaculate. Yeah, oh, I will never. It's just a bit dusty. <laughs> it's a bit dusty. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. Beautiful. Probably the first time it's ever been off. Try and understand where the clips are. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm grabbing one there. Spring clips that are holding the string in place. So right now, I want to understand where they are, so I'm not forcing at the wrong area. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Right Look at that, undamaged. I'm quite proud of this. Yeah. Now that we've got the molding off, we can clearly tell the edges have started to delaminate. You can see that bubble ripple oh, effect. On the, on the glass, and, and it's just cutting your And cord. as the wire is coming up, it's getting into that brittle area. Yeah. And, and you know, it's just chewing into it, and then it's just splintered there. Yeah. So I kind of wish I brought the uh, Sawzall <laughs> with the flat blade. I told you it was a mint truck and you wouldn't have any issues. No, right? it's fighting me like a dog. <laughs> Sorry. Throw in a towel soon. <laughs> we'll get you another hat. Because that one looks like it's starting to sweat. Right. <laughs> oh shit, it's protruding through. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. <laughs> okay, so windshield's out. Uh, I'm gonna move the engine back an inch. I'm gonna move the firewall back two inches. So, um, cab off. And uh, here we go. So a couple things I got to change since the last time. Uh, I was debating on fuel lines and the wiring for the levels and the lights. All that's going to come out because we're going to use everything from the F550 that's in the yard. I think it was a 550. All I know it was a pile of garbage because it made it to 110,000 miles before the 6.4 blew up. So we're using the whole dash and the whole wiring harness and the whole HVAC unit, everything from that track. So we're gonna rip all of this out. Um, and these are not certified lift kits, um, but these are, as long as you get the Sherwood, the name brand, it's official cab mount. It's the same width and everything. It's, 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 it's just astounding how perfect these are. So uh, we'll drill a hole in the center of that on the lathe and we'll rip that out. Then we'll start getting into moving that monster back. Here we go. I think I may know why we only had 209 horse. There's nothing wrong with that fuel, is there? Yeah. It's true than that. I'm sure the Bronco will be similar. I did buy a new filter, I just never put it on. <laughs> Truck was running and driving, so we just drive her. There we go. Got to plan everything out. Got the exhaust, obviously, is going to take up all this real estate. Then uh, we got the transmission cooler, which I think will go right in this corner here. And then right here, we can put the air tank. People ask me why I left the compressor on the truck. 
we're probably going to run a, an air parking brake on the trailer um, and then make that kind of an anti-theft thing. Um, we're building trucks that really aren't going to be appraised for high value because a lot of people don't even know what we're doing. <laughs> so we just kind of got to make sure that uh, nobody's able to steal our stuff. Everything is going to be GPS tracked. Um, the Audi, the GTO, C10 already are. This one and the trailers obviously are too. So um, other than that though, uh, before I start painting anything here, we're gonna weld everything. Now I am gonna lift it and it's gonna be kind of high for my girls to come into. So we're gonna get some air cylinders from Princess Auto and make our own, um, because we do have the air compressor in the tank, and make our own hideaway steps that um, fold away. I don't really like the electric ones, they're too expensive. So I'm going to have some fun and try to build my own. Plus, when you open the door, it's going to go. Pshhh. How awesome is that? All right, so it took a long time to get that engine in the right place so that it fit everywhere. So I'm going to very strategically move this engine back an inch and a quarter. What I did was I put my bar here an inch and a quarter back from that, securely fastened with a pair of vice grips and um now the weight is on this bar so if i stick a ratchet strap maybe around the transmission and then tie it to the axle and then pull i should be able to slide that thing back but first i gotta move this transmission mount out of the way because it's actually right up against the oil pan there so we'll drill new holes once it's in place and then uh we'll be golden here we go It's nice when plans come together because these were the original holes and if I move the mount back to where it's supposed to be, the front hole lines up. I just need to drill this hole in the exact proper spot. So what you can do is take a piece of cardboard and line it up with the edge and then just find the hole and find the other hole. You got your two holes and you can just slide it over. That one there, to the edge there, you got a perfect hole for it to drill. Come to find a sharp drill bit. size bigger but I'll stick a, I can pry it now, I'll stick that bolt in, or stick this one in. From the bottom I just spray painted where the mount sits and then I put a little bit of grease in each hole and then I line up the paint with the bottom, the grease will leave a mark where to drill the holes and then my bolts won't rust in there because there's a little bit of grease in it. Okay, we've got a cross member there for the transmission, cross member here, cross member here, and a cross member here. I don't think all of them are necessary. I think this middle one here is just for this uh, hanger for the drive shaft and what we'll probably do is build one that goes this way or even even an x um, but for now we're going to get rid of this one and mount our cooler here we will we might even be able to hang the drive shaft uh, hanger bearing off of this one um, the only issue is uh like we have to have a two-piece because we're 85 inches critical mass for drive shaft starts happening around 60 inches 68 inches um, so we'll get that one made, and at the same time, we'll get the front drive shaft made. So um, every project car that I've ever driven has never, or pro project truck, sorry, whether it's a swap of whatever, has never had the front drive shaft actually in there. So we're going to get that taken care of right away. Now's the time. Uh, but in the meantime, let's take that out, mount our pickup on our drive shaft so we kind of know where it's going to go, um, line it up with that back axle and then uh, we can figure out the cooler and the air tank and the exhaust. Here we go.
All right, so the exhaust is all done, uh, tacked together. Uh, we're gonna get Vince to weld it. I can weld it, but I might as well pay Vince. He's gonna do a much better job ticking it. For this flange here on the on the cat, I just machined a, the, the proper taper on a V-band clamp. I had uh, one left over. So um, that's a much better setup than um, that tinny little flange that cat gives you, and they're not cheap. Now this isn't a muffler, it's like a resignator, but it's, it's well packed, she's pretty heavy. Um, and then the Silverado has five inch coming out of the muffler or resonator, but I went with four inch on this one. Only because this we're gonna be driving this thing for 12, 10, 12 hours at a time. And um, I, I did, the drone sounds cool for about an hour and then after a while it just gets to you, especially if we're gonna be sleeping in the back seat and that. But don't worry, the Silverado still has five inch exhaust. That'll be the toy. Um, and the C10 has dual four inch exhaust. So um, right now we can take the exhaust back off again. Vince can weld it on the bench. We're gonna pull the engine back out again, but I need my hoist for that. And to get the cab off the hoist, I need the little cart that I made. But that cart is holding up the box that I painted, uh, GTO. I'm waiting for a drive shaft. Um, and then that one's ready to go. How to drive down the road, a little vibration after we shortened the drive shaft, so just getting balanced and these drive shafts are getting made at the same time so um dropped them off yesterday and hopefully be done by the end of the week so here we go so because we've got the single transmission mount at the back uh, we're going to do a double on the front i like i like the idea of having them out um, on the side of the front of the engine. Originally they were uh, just the two two mounts there front and center. So the issue is my steering box is in the way so I think I'm gonna make a new bracket that just comes out a little bit and puts the mount right about here and then we'll incorporate the holes on the side here. Uh, they do have the, the mounts for the side there and then make my new cross member fill this in a little bit and then modify the actual cross member so that it fits the oil pan. Pretty cool, went to VNR. Sometimes I drive by, I think I'd be smarter and put my camera in the car with me or truck. But I drive by, if I'm driving by, I'm stopping in. <laughs> and I see this, this is not off a cat. It was off a smashed up air cooled engine and I'm pulling this front plate off and they're like, you want that? And funny thing is, the whole the top hole just doesn't line up 100%. Or the bottom ones do, and there is no middle hole. So we got four good ones, and then those ones I'm gonna have to oval just a hair, and that is exactly what I need. <laughs> so we'll pull the front balancer off and see if we can mount that at least with the two bolts, and then uh, work from there. Probably have to notch it around here or like like stop it here but that's perfect, like absolutely freaking perfect. Nice, heavy, same plate, same thickness. Oh, fantastic. VNR boys, thank you very much, here we go.
three quarter inch grade eight bolt straight through. That plate is nice and tight in there. Um, there's a bushing in the middle, so it actually tightens down on the bushing, gives you just a little bit of flex in there. And now we'll mark this and put them on a slight angle. And then this will get cut off and we'll weld um, this underneath here. So basically that plate is gonna be sitting right there nice and tight. And then we are golden. This is coming along really, really nice. And then we'll put a brace going up in here, put a brace going down like this. Wonderful. We'll do the same cut on the other side. Sticking heavy. So these are tight. Um, got a little bit sticking up the back, so we can run a bead on the back and on the front. And then these are notched, so we can try to find some cutoff pieces and stick them in there for a brace. Easy peasy. We'll clean these up. Maybe I'll weld this and then bash that over with a hammer. And then still have a plate coming off the back that goes to those side mounts. That'll be plenty strong. I can't do any more than that. Here we go. Okay boys, that turned out awesome. I did my first Cummins swap nine years ago, 10 years ago, before it was actually a thing. And uh, who knows, maybe these swaps will be the next thing and I should patent this. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to make anyone for anybody. This is a lot of work, but it turned out really nice. I got a brace on the bottom of it here holding it up, but keep in mind that we're gonna put a piece of angle iron on the bottom here and it's not gonna have any load this way. Um, because it'll be held nice and tight on the angle iron. Um, this plate is underneath this one, so it's holding up the front of the engine. We can shim it if we absolutely have to. Uh, not a whole lot because we're on an angle, but this keeps the engine in the middle, um, right where we want it to be, and it turned out really, really nice. The angle iron's outside in the dark and the weeds, and I don't want to, I only need like two six inch pieces, five inch pieces, and uh, I don't want to lug all the, I don't want to do it in the dark. So, I'm gonna call it quits, 10 o'clock. Um, and it was a really good day. Really happy with how that turned out. We'll paint it afterwards. Vince is gonna come and weld this all to the frame. Um, this weld will be uh, welded to this. The bottom of it will be welded to this, so two different types of steel. We'll fill this in yet, and then we'll put a little gusset over to the angle iron. Uh, but that's all tomorrow. We got the room to do that. Um, even with the rad hose and stuff, uh, we might have to snake that down a little bit yet, but i um, really, really happy with how that turned out. I don't think we need to gusset coming from here to here, uh, but we'll figure that out as we go. If it cracks on the highway uh, with traffic on the side and all the oil's gushing out the front, then we'll put a gusset there. But for now, I'm gonna go to bed. There we go. Twenty minutes at home. <laughs> Just to draw one hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so we're gonna tack the bottom pieces in place just so that they don't move and then probably tack it to the side and then we'll snap these tacks. We'll clean everything up and then weld everything solid without the engine in the way. I thought, you know what, I would never use that thing again for body steel and even just odds and ends. It's so you can, nice. You can really do a nice weave with it. It's consistently driven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, there she is. Um, first time sitting down on the mount on the front. Um, I'm just a bit tight here. This little piece is hitting the washer, shoving that over here, so I have to trim that. Um, this one is okay. Underneath looks really good, except for the very back brace there. I got enough clearance here. Um, I can weld in uh, a plate. The back one I gotta trim a hair more, but I have it there to be able to do that. And man, that looks good. We'll splash some paint on it. Um, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to fill these in. Even though that would look much better, I won't be able to get out my nut then. So um, we're going to leave that. And um, man, I'm extremely happy with that. That is sitting right where I want it to. Man, that was a big step. Um, that was a huge step, actually. Uh, we're gonna stop there. Um, next episode, we're gonna be doing the exhaust and the drive shaft. Drive shaft just needs to be balanced. Um, exhaust is finished. Just gotta put that back on again. It's all kind of working together, but we're building it in order and the engine mounts come before all that. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, appreciate your patience. Um, this has all been over the process of a month and then we're putting the videos together now. So. Um, it is midnight, time to go to sleep, settle down a little bit. I might have to watch a movie or something because I'm pretty excited about this, but I got to stop because anything else I do, I'm going to have to do over in the morning. So remember, if you're not filthy, is my face dirty? I imagine it's pretty dirty because it's pretty sweaty and a lot of grinding and cutting and welding. If you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go.